All right, <clears throat> welcome to Tribulation Day 103. And the world continues to spiral downwards into chaos. This morning, Hurricane uh, Irene is headed towards the U.S. And as of this morning, the news channels are saying it's pretty much the worst case scenario that the hurricane is going to scrape the whole eastern seaboard from Carolina up on through to New York and probably even Martha's Vineyard. You know, maybe that's where this hurricane is headed, Martha's Vineyard, just to, uh, you know, teach somebody a lesson. You know, I don't know who, but uh, a certain someone is out there vacationing while the rest of the world goes to hell. You know, the stock markets, you know, uh, I want to just say, uh, I hope Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple, is doing okay. I actually added his uh, clip to the wall here. Jobs exit, end of an error. For what it's worth, I, wor I worked 17 years at Apple, and uh, I had several... Uh, uh, personal interactions with Steve Jobs while I worked there and in fact uh, you know one of my favorite stories is when I first started at Apple and I was only about 19 years old I was working in the service department in Sunnyvale and uh, in those days Steve Jobs you know as, as young as he was he wore a beard to kind of make him look older but anyway I was in the uh, break room and uh, what I didn't know is Steve Jobs had shaved off his beard, so he looked younger than me. But uh, I was at the vending machine getting a candy bar, and this young guy walked up behind me, and he said, Hey, man, what do you think about Apple? And I had no idea who he was. And I turned around, and I said, Yeah, you know, this is a great company, man. Really cool. I like the uh, work atmosphere. And he's like, oh, okay, great. And then I said, and, and and he says, is there anything wrong with the company? And I said, well, you know, the only thing I could tell you is, you know, and I'd I'd only been there for a month or two. And I said, I said, I hear over in Cupertino, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, every Friday they get a party and a beer bust, you know, but over here in Sunnyvale, you know, our manager never gives us anything. We don't get any beer bust parties, anything. And Steve Jobs was like, oh, really? And, you know, the thing about Steve Jobs is he, he wouldn't just take something that somebody says literally, you know, so he actually went and talked to other people to see if what I had said was true. Now, what I didn't realize is as I was talking to Steve Jobs, the building manager, I'm not going to say his name, but his area associate was sitting in the break room, so she witnessed me talking to Steve Jobs. So, uh, anyway, what happened was word got out that uh, in the in the warehouse in the building you know we had about 200 people that worked in the building word got out that Steve Jobs was looking for the uh, building manager so the building manager all I can tell you is he was kind of a doofus and uh, you know so he was walking around you know like I gotta find Steve Jobs I gotta find Steve Jobs and right in the middle of the warehouse, he walked up, and Steve Jobs walked up, but the manager didn't recognize him because he had shaved his beard. And, he, and, you know, we had a lot of young guys working in Apple in those days. So, uh, anyway, uh, Steve Jobs walked right up to the building manager where they were, like, nose to nose with each other. And the building manager, you know, took out his finger and was, like, thumped Steve Jobs, like, couple times in chest and he's like who the hell are you you know like what are you doing getting in my way and then Steve Jobs just thumped him right back he's like I'm Steve Jobs you know and then he hauled the manager off into a back room and you know proceeded to you know put the beat down on him now the repercussions of the whole thing is when it was all said and done the manager was like who the hell started all this and his area associate was in the break room she said hey you know what that guy Ben Helliston he's got it started it so the next thing I know, you know, the manager's running all around the building looking for me, and he finally finds me, and he's, he's like, you know, I heard you're the one that dropped the dime on me and said that I don't treat people right. And I was just like, yeah, that's what I said. That's the truth. And then he said, well, I hope, he goes, I, he goes, I, he goes, well, you know what, you think you could do better? And then I looked at him, and I said, well, it isn't very hard to do better than nothing. 
So what he did is he said, all right, you're in charge of employee morale. And, uh, you know, for the next three years, I had a, a blank checkbook from Apple that I could write checks out to whoever I wanted to. But, you know, I was kind of smart. You know, I didn't just, you know, go blow money and spend money without even thinking about it. But I threw some of the most killer parties for the service department they had ever had. And I kind of gained a reputation within the company. And, you know, because of it, I actually transferred up to the Macintosh factory right as it was in the startup phase. And I kind of helped uh, launch the Mac up in Fremont, California. But, you know, that's just one story of many. But anyway, I just want to say, you know, uh, you know, I hope he's doing all right. But Steve, you know, he was a visionary. And just like me, you know, he believed in thinking outside of the box and challenging the status quo man he wouldn't let you know somebody say this is how it is he'd be like no I'm gonna tell you how it is but uh, beyond that you know the uh, economic meltdown uh, continues approaching you know Warren Buffett one of the ultra uber elite rich that Obama keeps saying hey you know what Warren Buffett says uh, you know it's okay to tax rich people well you know what Warren Buffett is an idiot man and Warren Buffett doesn't give a crap about little people and you know what I know he lives kind of frugally and whatnot but he just went and bought a ten or six percent of Bank of America saying hey you know what I don't think the end of the world's coming I think things are gonna be all right well you know what I'll tell you if you follow Warren Buffett's advice you're gonna end up broken destitute and you know who's gonna end up super rich from it all yeah Warren Buffett man and he isn't kicking anybody down any of his money you know like if, if he really wanted to he could just write out a check and send 90 percent of his wealth to the government but he isn't gonna do that so he's just like Obama you know he appears to be you know to, to portray himself as some kind of down-to-earth you know average Joe that's a multi gazillionaire but you know what he's a greedy you know Illuminati type that is just out to make things work to his benefit man so uh, that's all I got to say about that um, you know the Middle East still a complete mess Gaddafi has not been found you know the saga continues with violence and uh, bloodshed pretty much everywhere you look in the Middle East and no leadership whatsoever from America all right. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is I ran across a video which I posted to the Tribulation blog, and it's all about a comet, uh, Elenin, that was discovered by this uh, Russian astronomer uh, about a decade or so ago. But anyway, I did some research on the internet. You can go to NASA and uh, type in Elenin, and they got some information, but there's plenty of websites out there. But uh, a lot of people have tied this comet to the Hopeye prophecy uh, where they talk about the end of the world and they, they've got about 10 signs of things that are going to come to pass before the end of the world and you know like about eight or nine of them have already happened but the final one is the approach of these two stars the blue star and the red star which would be the beginning of the end or the transformation from the fourth world to the fifth world but the blue star is supposedly like a heads up a warning which is going to be followed by a red star which you know basically uh you know, obliterates the planet in some manner. But man, a lot of inter interesting information in the video talking about how the comet could have a poisonous tail, how the comet could be, uh, you know, basically a huge capacitor that's going to blow up. But, uh, you know, I don't know whether it is the fulfillment of the Hopeye prophecy or whether the end of the world is going to come, but, you know, there's good news and bad news with this. You know, the uh, good news is it may all be not true or not going to happen but the bad news is if it is true we're only about two weeks away what they said is uh starting around september 1st the, the labor day weekend this comet's going to start making its approach through our solar system and then on 9 11 of all days it's going to reach like the critical position where it's between earth and the sun and they're, they're saying at that point you know something crazy could happen but what the, what the uh, website on this comet uh what, what the video says, and I actually found a couple of websites, is they say the planetary alignments of the comet, the sun, and all the other planets, you know, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, uh, there was one website I found that mapped out all these planetary alignments because we're headed towards the big galactic alignment in 2012, but I found one website where they were correlating the planetary alignments with pretty much every earthquake that's happened in the last, you know, two or three years from Fukushima to the one that happened in Washington just two days ago. So, you know, according to this website, 
uh, probably September 4th or September 11th, there's supposed to be some massive earthquakes. So we'll just have to see. So, man, we could be on the cusp of just extreme change. But Hurricane Irene right now looks like it's going to be a total disaster, man. All you people on the East Coast, I got cousins in Providence, man. Take care of yourselves. Uh, prepare. Board things up. Stay safe, man. Think positive. Keep the faith. Keep on rocking. We will get through this, man. Peace.